Hi, I'm Harper. Ciao, I'm Eva. Recently, Eva and I made a video all about bread. You can watch it here. But we realized afterwards that we forgot the most important Italian bread product. Well, at least if you believe Olive Garden. What we are going to make today? Breadsticks! Uh, we make the grissini. Will they be unlimited though? No, it's like they are limited based on the quantity that we are going to make. What's the point? If breadsticks aren't unlimited, why bother having them? So you can make a bunch of them. Okay. Before we begin, a quick shout out to a pasta grammarian in action. Lucia, who made this amazing dish of rotelle with salsiccia. Lucia, you did a great job. Brava! If you want to become a pasta grammarian, just hit that subscribe button and let's get cooking. What do you have in front of you? Not much. It's breadstick, grissini, they are pretty simple. We've got flour. Si. I'm going to assume bread flour. Si, bravo. Uh, dry yeast. Uh, salt, water, and olive oil. Perfect. This is, these are all the ingredients that we need to make our breadstick. So, Harper, we start from the flour. Okay. Put the flour in the other bowl. In a bigger bowl, because I want to be good with you today. I appreciate it. So, now mix the yeast with the water. So, I pour the yeast into the water. See? Si. Yeah. And stir. And stir so the yeast melts a little bit. Okay, that's pretty dissolved. So now you pour the water into the flour. Okay, just all at once? All at once. Be sure to collect all the yeast and with the wooden spoon. Start mixing? You start mixing. So at this point, when more or less he creates, uh, the, the dough is more or less created, mm -hmm. we can add salt. Okay. Keep mixing. Keep mixing. And now you can transfer the dough on here. Okay. And start working with your hands. Because this time, breadstick needs to be made hands in, not hands off. All right, I just start kneading it. Okay, before we need to put some olive oil. So spread a little bit the dough. And now after mix. So you just drizzle it on top, huh? See, and now mix. Okay. It will be a pretty sticky dough, but we can't add any other grams of flour because otherwise we will destroy the result. So, be patient. Do you know where the grissini are from? Because, uh, yes, now you can find them in all of Italy, but they are, uh, they were born in a place. I have no idea. Torino. Oh. So, the grissini were made for the son of the king. Because the son of the king, he couldn't eat uh, the, the normal bread, the soft one. Uh -huh. Because he had problem to digest. So, the king asked to the bakery chef uh, to prepare a bread that uh, the son uh, could eat. And because the grissini are uh, very crunchy, the son could easily eat them, digest them, and they became one of the favorite snack bread of the King of Italy, the Queens of Italy, and then also of all Italians. So it's a royal dish. It's a royal, a royal dish, yes, that it's also pretty easy to make. Says you, this is getting quite sticky. So, because it's quite sticky, I can understand them. With this, you can help yourself. See? By folding it? Perfect, Albert. Bravo. Well, you see? I've seen you do this about a million times before, but I've never done it myself. <laughs> it actually works pretty well. Albert, do you like Grissini? Uh, I'm not sure I've ever had the real Grissini. I've had like Olive Garden style breadsticks. So now I'm so curious. I've never been to Olive Garden, so I'm so curious to understand how they make this grissini. I need to take you there at some point. After you're working on this for about five minutes, mm -hmm. more or less, okay. Try to create a bowl. 
and we leave this for 10 minutes. Cover it with, with the, the bowl. bowl. Okay. So, in 10 minutes, it will be much easier to fold the dough. Okay, we'll be back in 10 minutes. And we're back after 10 minutes. So, what we need to do right now, Harper, is fold our dough. So, I will show you how. So, you need to do something like that. You see? Mm -hmm. So, I pick it up like this. See? Fold it. Perfect. And then turn it. See? And fold it again. So can you see how the dough changed? Yeah, it's much, it's more much smoother. Perfect. Yeah. This is what we are looking for. Still quite sticky, but it's smoother. Sticky. It's sticky, but it's much more uh, smooth. Now that you fold it enough, you bring it back into the bowl. Okay. And cover it with a plastic wrap. We need to let the dough rise for about one hour, one hour and a half. What we are looking for is to double the dough in size. So it should be the double in size. Okay, well, I guess we've got some waiting to do. Uh, I feel not really. I made the dough this morning <laughs> and it's proof too, so. That does look like it's doubled in size. Pour the dough here, but using some flour, a little bit. Like that? See? And now I can just transfer it on there? Transfer there. We need this. Oh my, it's mattarello time. We are going to use uh, this. Uh huh. So it needs to be the same shape. Oh, it's a lot less sticky. You can also flip, so all the side of the dough will have some flour. I thought this was gonna be a nightmare to roll out, but it's actually not that hard. So just understand. Get in there. Now, before you need to pour some olive oil here. Uh, okay. And now I assume I have to transfer this into here. Bravo. Okay, hey, that was not so hard. I assume I'm doing the right thing and pressing it into the corners. I think that you don't need me anymore in this kitchen. So, because without saying you a word, you are doing what it needs to be done. Boy, it feels like I should spread some tomato sauce on it, some cheese. No, this is not a pizza. These are grissini. So what we it's need- It's not too late to change our minds. No, we don't change our mind because I really want grissini today. So <laughs> okay. what we need to do is cover it again with plastic wrap uh. and let it proof for another hour. Did you- Make another one that's sitting somewhere. No, this time no. Uh, okay. <laughs> this time we need to wait. <laughs> All right, well, we'll cover this and we'll be back in about an hour. And we're back. As you can tell from the dramatic change in appearance, it's been one hour. Now, the first thing, Carper, is uh, turn on the oven. Temperature? 180. 180, which is 355 degrees Fahrenheit. Bravo, Arpe. So what we can do now, Harper, is just make our grissini and leave them completely white. But why we don't, uh, how do you say, spice things up? Spice things up? A little bit. Okay. Make them a little bit cooler. I'm into that. And we are going to spread on our grissini dough three toppings. Uh, you've given me some rosemary. We have some rosemary. Some sesame seeds. See? And this, uh, olives. See, this is a sort of olive pate that I made uh, before. I just blend some olives and then I had some uh, olive oil. So it's pretty, pretty easy. Spread some oil on all our grissini. 
Be sure to brush all the surface because uh, we need the, the, olive to, the olive oil to attach our uh, toppings. We have uh, three toppings, so we will divide this uh, in three parts. On the first part, uh, we pour uh, some rosemary, but chop the rosemary. Can you smell the rosemary? I don't think they can, but I can. No, can you smell? Oh, yeah. They can. I thought you were saying that to the camera. Can you guys smell the rosemary? I can smell the rosemary. Okay. Now we choose the very simple toppings for our grissini. Feel free to choose more or less wherever you want. It's like if you like onion, for example, or if you like tomato paste, uh, dry sun dried tomatoes, uh, if you like green olives, uh, if you want to put some other uh, seeds, like some flower seeds. What about gallons of garlic butter? No, maybe no. Maybe this. I I feel that I feel uh, that I can say avoid like a little bit of garlic. Yes, three kilos of garlic. Uh, maybe no. sesame, sesame seeds. Sesame seeds. More. More you put, more you will find. Is the rule is always the same. Okay. Well, I would not mind finding some more. So. And then on the last one, the olives, don't be shy. But I am shy. Okay, so they seem seasoned, but they don't seem very uh, stick-like yet. No, because now we are going to make the grissini. Okay. So using a knife or using this, what you need to do is cut our grissini in stripes. Yeah. Strip, stripe, Steps. strips. Strips. They should be one centimeter thick, more or less something like that. <laughs> I don't know what a centimeter is. It's like something like that, but more or less it's like cut. Like, uh, like let that? me see. Uh, see, it should be okay. If you have problem with the knife, you can use easily this. Try it. Well, I wouldn't have expected the less sharp implement to be easier, but it is. They already look nothing like the breadsticks I'm used to. They're very thin. If you go to Turin, where the Grissini were born, they are long as how they can open the arms. This is the way in which they make the Grissini. This long. See, see, and the good thing about Grissini is that more they are irregular, mm -hmm. better they are because it means that you made a tom. When you see all the regular, they are all the same size, the same thickness, thickness. it's like they, you, you are sure that they are not good. <laughs> Perfect recipe for me. Okay, they're all cut. So Arper, this time you can cut them in an half. So what we need to do is sprinkle here some semolina flour. But if you don't have semolina flour, feel free also to use some corn flour, for example. We put here. We put some parchment paper. Take one Arper, mm -hmm. stretch, twist, and pass here. Okay. Like this? Like this, yes, you can. Uh, like, just like that? See, just like that. And put here. A breadstick. Easy. Do another one here. Test it. Boom. Yeah, these are gonna be rustic, all right. They need to be rustic. Okay. If they are perfect shaped, they are not good grissini. This is a rule. Okay, well, I have a lot to do here, so we'll be back in a few minutes once I have these all twisted up. As you guys can see, we ended up with quite a few. We have one two, 
three trays of breadstick, breadsticks. We are going to bake them for about 15, uh, 20 minutes. Uh, always depends from your oven. Uh, what we are looking for is they become uh, golden and uh, crunchy. Woo, barely fit. All right, we'll be back in 15 to 20 minutes. Yeah, those definitely don't look anything like what I've had at Olive Garden before. <laughs> they also don't smell anything like what I've had at Olive Garden. They smell absolutely amazing. In this kitchen, uh, there is the smell of the olive and rosemary. I'm trying the rosemary, rosemary. one. Rosemary, I'm gonna try an olive one. Buon appetito. Buon appetito. They are crunchy, they are simple, they are easy. They are a very good snack. I need to try a rosemary one. Try the olive. Mamma mia. It's good, huh? Mamma mia. Guys, we hope you enjoyed this recipe. Give it a shot. They're actually very easy to make and super delicious. You will also blow people away if you come out with a basket of these at a dinner party or something. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up and we'll see you next time. Ciao. Ciao. So Arper, now it's time to make the dough that you made before. You gotta make more? These really are unlimited breadsticks. Italian Siri thought that me saying unlimited breadsticks was summoning them. <laughs>